Hello everyone. Uh, thanks Andrea for having me. My name is Christoph Ruge and um, I'm a railway engineer by day and a brickhead by night. And night is especially good for space stuff. So today I will present you some of my space related models which I made over the last year using Lego bricks. Um, it all started, well, long ago, as most of you, I guess, have played with LEGO in their childhood, I have as well. Um, this was one of my favorite models. Um, it's cropped a bit. Well, um, some might know it, it's not my creation. I built it, I didn't create it, but I liked it. And uh, that was long ago. About a year ago, I rebooted so to speak, my LEGO space career um, by creating own models and not like this, which is a fictional, well, not a real model. Um, I started playing around with uh, bricks and come up with uh, some satellites, some uh, different styles. And when playing around with them, I realized that with those round bricks, well, that's... It reminds me of something when I look up in the sky. And, um, well, I thought, what about space station? Well, space station. Um, this model is about 2,000 plus bricks. Um, you can see a prototype of that over there behind glass. It would be, will be quite huge. Um, but... It has lots of playable features, like you see all the panels can be turned, of course. Um, the Canadarm can be moved on the mobile supporting system. And um, all modules can, as Reinhold said this morning, be rearranged like Lego bricks, um, which is because they are Lego bricks. And um, even the, the Canadarm has the possibility to, to pick up the bricks, actually, so you could really play uh, the rearrangement of the station. Um, this, at the moment, is just CGI. It's a 3D model I have in my computer. The, the prototype, that's more or less everything I can do in real at the moment, since not all bricks are available. Um, but we come to that later. Soon, when I finish this model, more or less finished, I think work on such a station is never finished, um, I came up with the question, can that be done in a smaller scale? And the answer is obvious, yes, it can. Um, the one you see in the back is actually the same size of an official LEGO model of the 2006 year, which had the station in the, as it were, as it were, in 2006. So now I um, upgraded that to the full-size nowadays version. And in front you see um, <laughs> an even smaller version well, for the CEO desktop. It's a prototype of which looks now like this. And that's the one um, we gave away this morning. So Reinhold, this is how it should, to be, uh, should, should to look like in the end. <laughs> well, the back comes with the instruction guide, though. Um, with this model, I was ex uh, especially amazed since it is a tiny scale. It's just like this. You can see the prototype over there. But still, you can turn the panels. You have a canadarm. You have the radiators. Um, so it is already highly detailed, though it is just uh, not even 200 bricks. Well... Now I had a space station. I assembled that, but, well, how to assemble a space station in a proper way? Reynolds told us this morning, you will need a space shuttle. Um, as you can see in the picture, this model is uh, especially designed to host the models of my ISS. So they would fit into the cargo bay. The Canada would fit along with it into the cargo bay. Um, not all credits of this model goes to me. It is based on an official Lego set, which I streamlined in the design, and especially I enlarged the cargo bay. So, but sometimes when you use this shuttle, or 
when NASA used to use the shuttle, they land it somewhere else, then they will want to start it the next time. So in that case, it really would uh, be worth bringing back Firefly, the um, Enterprise, so the shuttle, and therefore you need a shuttle carrier aircraft. This again is based on an uh, official uh, a Lego uh, aircraft, which I modified in a way that it would be appropriate to host the shuttle. So now we have a shuttle, we have a shuttle cargo bay. What else could you taxi if you have such a cargo bay? You could shuttle a Hubble Space Telescope. Again, of course, the body of this telescope fits into the model. It's cargo bay. Regretfully, the antennas don't, but <coughs> tell nobody. Um, anyway, since we don't have a space shuttle anymore, and uh, we still keep up supporting the station, we need another solution for that. We have another solution for that. It's called a Soyuz rocket. In there, up there, is the very same cute little uh, Soyuz model, which fits with the ISS model, which fits in scale with, uh, you get the point. Um, I have the, the little one over there behind glass as well. I especially like this model since it involves a train, and I'm a railway engineer. But now, well, probably you're guessing what's coming, but we have a Soyuz, we have a train, we want to launch the Soyuz. So we need a launch pad. <laughs> I think this never stops, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, so you can go on and on. At least the cooling part is there. And uh, since we have different launch pads in Baikonur, you could go, well, on and on. Uh, again, this is a quite detailed model, but it's quite large. As you see, it's the normal uh, Lego train scale, so it would per fit perfectly in, in the children's or more adult children's um, uh, Lego collection. It is highly detailed, but it is large, huge, which is nice, but it's still. So, question arises, can this be done in a smaller scale? Yes, it can. <laughs> Cute, isn't it? <laughs> it's a train, it's a rocket, it's the launch pad, everything's there. Without uh, the fuel supply, sorry. Well, but now we have a, uh, um, a Soyuz, we have a launch site in Baikonur for the Soyuz. But is the Soyuz only launched from Baikonur? No, it's not. You can launch it from <laughs> the Guiana Space Center as well. So this is uh, just a uh, touch a sketch. This is my latest model, I'm still working on it. You see the uh, doors of that uh, launch support tower are missing. I wanted to show you anyway, I'm working on that. And as you've, yeah, well, it's work in progress. You always find something you could do better with the models. So now we are on the other side of the planet. We are in Guiana Space Center. Is there anything else launched from there? Well, yes, there is. <laughs> so what about the Ariane, for example? Here, fifth edition Ariane on its pad on its pad, on its launch site. Uh, separable boosters, you can have a version with the satellite in there, um, and you can slide the launch tower to the launch site. A couple of years ago, Ariane got a little, no, wait a minute, next one. Um, you can have a, a bigger scaled version of that as well. In this case, uh, I showcased how to separate the boosters and the different stages and even the two satellites stacked on top of it in the top of the rocket. But then again, the tower for that one would be huge. A couple of years ago, Ariane got a little sister, the Vega. This cutie is just the size of the Ariane booster but it has its own launch pad, and I think it really looks proud on that one, don't you think? 
Well, but then again, Vega, some of you might know, is not only a rocket of today. It uh, was a Russian space probe in 1984, sent uh, to explore Venus. Uh, it carried a lander, actually, up there the, in, in the dome. And um, that lander landed on the surface of Venus and lasted only 56 minutes, gathering data, transmitting data. So therefore, I think 60 hours is already quite a huge success. But let's not forget about other historic space vehicles, which we've heard of today as well already the Mir space station. This one again with the same Soyuz capsules as the other models and uh, down there the orange thing, the um, space shuttle docking port. Some of the before shown models are here on display over there in the corner. Um, some of them I uploaded to the Lego Ideas portal, which is a um, crowdsourcing portal. And if a model there gains 10,000 supporting votes, it will be evaluated by the Lego group and considered being made as a real set so that everybody can build it and, well, buy it, build it. One. Um, this model has gained as we speak to, of today, 6,800 votes already. So it would still need uh, 3,200 votes. And the deadline for that is the end of April. So it's only 39 days left. But, um, well, it's a challenge, but I think it's a feasible challenge. So if you like this, please support it. Please spread the word about it. Um, 100 votes a day, roughly, I think that can be done. For those who are interested, I could give you a um, behind the scenes making off with the 3D model turning and showing all the details uh, in another speech as well. Thank you for your attention. Thanks very much, Chris. And in the meantime, if you guys noticed, we just had a, a sunrise on the International Space Station and we're on the side of the Earth again where you can see live views of um, the outside cameras on the ISS. Uh, we'll take two questions for Chris and then he's going to be around all space up so you can chat to him during the coffee and lunch breaks. Uh, we have one here and one at the back, Richard and Daniel. Um, am I live? Yeah. Yes. Okay, certainly. good. Um, <laughs> you mentioned you, you uh, designed these in uh, 3D application. Is that uh, available yes. to normal humans? And it is. It's uh, the, the official tool by the LEGO group. It's called the LEGO Digital Designer. It's uh, free for download for Mac and Windows. And it uh, hosts all the bricks. They are, they are, were. And if you switch to the expert mode, you can get all bricks in all colors in all amount, so it's the unlimited uh, Lego brick case, and you can build stuff like that with it. And final question, and while we're asking that, Daniel, um, can all of the EAC staff please come down to the stage now? It's actually a question on behalf of Paxi, the official ESA mascot. Could you design one of Paxi's uh, spaceships, which is the little round uh, saucer thing that Paxi flies in? Uh, I do think so. I would need a picture of it.